Good morning guys, welcome back to today's video. So I'm finally cut the grass. Oh, he also is in the process of taking down our little fenced in area. I love this, this is my favorite area of the barn. But good morning, welcome back to today's video. I still have so much to clean in the barn. This is overwhelming. <laughs> this is overwhelming, we're doing like the biggest spring clean that we've ever done before and it's a lot. So today I wanna to tackle this section at some point. <laughs> This is all of our beach stuff and our car seats for our grandbabies. And it's all just sitting here getting dusty. We actually have four car seats and we only need three. So somebody commented today, I think it was Paige, and she said, why aren't the horses on grass? And we do have our horses on grass. We're, we're acclimatizing them. But I wanna show you how this is like a stick and it has all these measurements on it. And it tells you when your horses can it tells you when your horses can go on grass, when it's safe. Spring grass is really, really high in sugar because it's growing and you have to wait till your grass gets to be this high before you can put, it, put them on it full time. So the ground is so wet still, I can't even believe it. We have like a lot of spots that are really short and then when you put the grass, when you put the stick down, this is what, this is what we did to determine that the horses are ready to come out on the grass. So see how it's like just at the stick now? So this is why we've been acclimatizing them slowly because the grass is ready for them. I know it has to be different in other places and a lot of people keep their grass on all year. So what happens is if you have a field where your horses stay in the winter, and most of it's tore up, but you actually get some grass in it, horses can acclimatize slowly to the grass as it grows but those kind of fields don't have enough grass in them to feed a horse like they don't have enough grass to give them everything they need they still are going to need hay so I know it's confusing if it's different someplace else and it can be different even in the same areas because some people use hay fields for food and some people just have like a grass in their field or oh <laughs> Ellie just fell off the couch. Anyway, our horses go out every single day. We've been acclimatizing them for the last couple of weeks, just slowly. And we go really slow because we don't want any kind of problems with the sugar. Spring, where we live, is really hard on horses. Mr. Well, Slowpoke himself. <laughs> He's like, I know where I'm going. They all know. Anyway, they're up to like a couple hours a day that they're out there. And when we bring them in, they're so happy to come in because out there, they're standing in the sun. There goes one, there goes two, three, four, five. And the most important thing is, is that we can't put our horse's health at risk because we have a lot of aging horses. We can't put them at risk because other people don't understand. And that's like a big thing. Like no matter how many people message me and say, like, your horses should be on grass. It's not safe for them until it reaches a certain level. And, and it's because we use it for food. So, <laughs> Anyway, they all come out every day for periods of time and then they go home and then they go back in and they go back in and they stand in the arena and they rest from the sun and eventually they'll be out here for eight hours. Do you guys see Ellie? <laughs> Ellie! <laughs> I think the two big issues are that one, because we don't show us putting them on grass every day, people don't realize that they do go on grass. And number two, if you don't live in the same climate and you don't have the same situation where you're feeding them in a hay field for their dinner, then you, you maybe just can't understand. Like, it's just a different experience. Here. They don't go all the way back. 
Somebody got a package. Ellie, 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 come here. Stay here. Did you guys know that when I leave Ellie in the car, she pees on my seat? Stay. Don't pee on my seat. Hey. Honestly, this is like the most frustrating store. I don't even know why I come here. Okay, so this is what's so crazy. Like, I, I don't know if you guys watch TikTok, but there's this conspiracy theory going around on TikTok that the chicken feed companies are making food that the chickens aren't laying. So there's this huge conspiracy theory. So anyways, I don't like to pay attention to that stuff. Sam always pays attention to it. But then, every time I go to the chicken store, like, Everybody knows that has chickens that you can't give them a diet full of corn. If you give them a diet full of corn, they won't lay eggs. You use like a, um, a chicken mash that has a bunch of different stuff in it, like corn. Oh, mash is corn. Yeah, you only use a mash like that has corn in it for like a treat. So I don't feed that stuff. But every time I go to the, every time I go to the chicken store, they say, I say, hi, can I get some chicken feed, please? And she says, do you want mash or pellet? She says, do you want mash or pellet? And I'm like, mash, because I don't want the pellet, but what I really want is crumble. So she only gives me two options. She says, do you want the mash or the pellet? And so I say, I want the mash, because I can't remember for the life of me that, that mash and crumble are different. Like I can't remember mash and crumble. Like don't they sound the same? A mash is mashed up and crumble is crumbled up. Like anyways. The stuff is really bad for chickens, but they make it at there. So they put corn and they put oyster shells and it seems like it's such a good thing, but it's so bad for them and it makes them, it reduces how much they lay or it stops them from laying at all. And so every time I go there, I get the wrong stuff and I'm always so frustrated because it's expensive and you get such a giant bag, it takes me forever to go through it. So I'm like, oh, that's the wrong stuff. You have to go back. I thought I had to pay more, but actually they had to owe me over $5 more. So like I'm even saving myself money by getting the right kind of food for my chicken. Holy so heck. Your user is almost the same price as The stuff that I don't want costs $28. The stuff that I do want that's better for them costs $20. So anyways, when I went back in, she's like, just tell me I want chicken feed and then I'll give you the choices. I say that every single time and they only give me two choices. The stuff that I want, or they then it's never the stuff that I want. So anyways, after she said that to me, I'm like, that's exactly, what I, was. I just was like, well, thank you so much. I'm so sorry, like blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that is my rant, all completely finished. I cannot get the right chicken food to save my life. She said that most people buy that, that crumble stuff. Wait, is it crumble? Nah. Crumb? You're dumb. That's what I need to remember. Uh, Most people buy the mash, she said. Mash your stash. <laughs> mash your stash. Uh, mash. I don't know. Too much cash. <laughs> yeah. Mash is the mash is too much cash. We're trying to think of words that I can remember what I need. I need the crumb. I need the crop. Anyway, we got it all fixed. Sam has the right saying. So Sam figured it out how I'm gonna remember what I want at the at the feed store. Yeah, I made a saying and it says, I don't want mash, it's too much cash. Don't be dumb, give me crumb. Yeah, so that's what I'm gonna say. When they say, do you want pellets or mash? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna say, don't be dumb, give me crumb. Mash is too <laughs> much cash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'll love that. <laughs> this is how we lunge our horses. We go and bring them in off the field. Oh, she's coming to you. Is she coming to you? Nope. There is nothing <laughs> in between. So baby, we should start now. <laughs> she knows what she doesn't want to do. <laughs> They're so excited. They all know. That they're going in. Hi, Penny. Another trick that we do with our horses is that we feed them breakfast and then put them out at lunchtime so that they're not starving. So, like, we don't, because horses can eat so much so fast. Oh, look. He didn't even try and run away. He's like, you're my girl. Such a good boy. Hi, Hans. See, she just spooked because Willow came up behind her. She'll be okay. So that's what we do with the horses every day. And then today they'll go, so, and then we'll bring them again tonight. 
and put them on. Today's a super busy day. We have a sad goodbye to say. And I'm gonna share it with you guys and explain it a little bit to you. So basically, my little nephew is ready for a pet. He's ready for a pet and he's been asking Sophie for the longest time if he can have her bearded dragon and she just keeps saying no, like for the last year. She just keeps saying no and I, I get it. It's his birthday next week and Sophie finally decided that she's gonna give him her bearded dragon. So her his parents don't want him to have a baby one. They want him to have like a fully grown one, one that's already established and so they don't have to worry about him handling like a baby and stuff. So Trixie's moving on to a new family. She's gonna go and be loved by a little boy. We have had her now for three years, almost three years. This fall will be three years. So two and a half years we've had her for. And we've loved her and she's been amazing. And we're gonna give her to our nephew. So he is turning 10 and it is the perfect pet for a 10 year old boy. I was talking to his family and they were saying like, this is what they wanna get him. And they were asking us advice and stuff. And then it finally just clicked. Like it would, she would be perfect for him. He plays with her every time he comes to our house. He knows her already. We have everything that they need. It's just easier for them. And he's the perfect owner for her. We, um, but we also told them that if they ever wanna get rid of her, that we will just take her right back and she can come home anytime. We did the same thing with our cat, Dustpan. So we had our cat, we've had her since she was um, like six weeks old, like really tiny. And she loved my son, Nick, but we, but he grew up and he moved out of the house and he went his own way. And then years later, when she was like 10 to 11, when she was about 10, he came over to the house and she went crazy for him. Like, and he was so, and he was head over heels in love with her and it just was such a better fit for her. And so she's like 13 years old now and loving her life. She's the only animal in her house. She's not being chased around and bothered by dogs and she's loving her life. So that is the plan for dear little Trixie. I wanted you guys to know though because I will get messages from now until the day I die asking where's Trixie, where's Trixie? So, so I wanted you guys to know so you don't have to worry about her. So we dropped off our bearded dragon. We said goodbye. How do you feel about it, Sophie? Fine. Yeah, he's so happy. Anyways, we're checking out Costco in another city. This is not a regular Costco. Don't you know that you're beautiful? Just the 